Hello, everyone. Welcome to your partner in education, Agile Rank Mate. Today, we're going to be looking at some questions regarding QSAT CAT. Now, QSAT is a federal university found in India, and it is a pit stop for people pursuing a career in science and technology. In order to enter into the Cochin University of Science and Technology, you need to take the Common Admission Test, also known as CAT. Now, this exam is rigorous, but however, with training, everyone can ace it. Now, in order to train for it uh, effectively, you need to analyze previous year questions. And that's what this video will be doing. So today, we'll be looking at some questions asked in previous years of the CAT exam, especially in the subject of chemistry. Let's start off with our first question. How much time in hours would it take to distribute one Avogadro's number of wheat grains if 10 raised to 20 grains are distributed each second? So, in this particular question, there is nothing to know about wheat grains. That is obvious. The calculation here is in terms of the mole concept. We just need to find out the time taken to distribute an Avogadro's number of grains if a specific rate is given. This is to identify the vastness of Avogadro's number. It's an exercise on that front. So, what will be the time taken to distribute Avogadro's number of grains? Well, if you have the rate of something and one quantity is, and the numerator is given, then the obvious way to calculate the denominator is to divide the numerator by the rate. So in this case, 10 raised to 20 grains are distributed each second. That's the rate. Avogadro's number of wheat grains is the total number of wheat grains, so that's the um, numerator. The denominator is the time that it takes. So the time taken, t, would be equal to 6.023 into 10 raised to 23 times 1 for one Avogadro's number, divided by 10 raised to 20. So that will be 6.023 into 10 raised to 3 seconds, which is again equal to 6,023 seconds. Now the next thing to do is to convert this value into hours. To get hours, we divide the value 6,023 by the multiplication of 60 and 60, which is basically 3600. So that will be 1.6 hours as an approximate. Now, if you were to look at the following options, you would see that the only option which is closest to it is option B, 1.673 hours. So options A, C, and D are incorrect because they have the wrong decimal point, which means that the number of hours would be more or less. In, A's, in the case of A, it's less. In the case of C and D, it's astronomically more time that's set. So therefore, option B, 1.673 hours, is the correct time period that it would take to distribute one Avogadro's number of wheat grains if 10 raised to 20 grains are distributed every second. Now let's look at another question. Arrange the following in terms of increasing mass. Oxygen's mass is 16, copper's mass is 63, nitrogen's mass is 14. Is it one, one atom of oxygen, one atom of nitrogen, 10 raised to minus 10 moles of oxygen, 10 raised to minus 10 moles of copper? So. How do we solve this question? Well, we have to use the Avogadro's number again, which, by the way, is 6.023 into 10 raised to 23 of something. So in order to find out one atom of oxygen, we take its gram atomic mass, which is 16, and divide it by the number of mo divided by the Avogadro's number. So 6.023 into 10 raised to 23. Now, if you were to do 16 over 6, well, you'll get 
um, you'll get an approximate value of 2.66 into 10 raised to minus 23 grams. So that's the mass of one atom of oxygen. What's about one atom of nitrogen? If we look at one atom of nitrogen, the mass is 14 here. So it'll be 14 over 6.023 into 10 raised to 23. Again, same thing, do the calculations, 14 over 6, get a 2 point, it gives you a 2, and you can add a 3, that's 20, 18, 2. So therefore, you would get an approximate value of 2.33 into 10 raised to minus 23 grams. That's the mass of nitrogen, one atom of nitrogen. Now what about 10 raised to minus 10 moles of oxygen? In this case, we use the molar mass, which is 16, and then multiply that with the number of moles, which in this case is 1 into 10 raised to minus 10. So that gives you 16 times 10 raised to minus 10 grams, and the same system goes for copper, it will be equal to 63 times 10 raised to minus 10 grams. So now that we have all of the masses of each scenario converted to grams, we can easily compare. You can clearly see that the one with the uh, higher negative exponent uh, will have the lower mass, and among the ones with 10 raised to minus 23, 2.33 has the lesser mass. And since its number is Roman num numeral 2, that will be the place with the least amount of mass, followed by Roman numeral 1. If we compare the uh, masses with the exponent 10 raised to my with the exponent minus 10, you can see that 16 is lower than 63. So we'll put 3 next on the list. And then finally, the list is topped up by no Roman numeral number 4, which has the highest mass among the following. So 2, less than 1, less than 3, less than 4 is the correct order of the four situations in terms of increasing mass. And if you were to look at the options, you would see that option A, 2, 1, 3, 4, is the correct option. The other options have varying terms, varying orders, which again is not correct because of the fact that we need to organize this in terms of increasing mass. Let's look at the final question of this episode. Which transition in the hydrogen atomic spectrum will have the same wavelength as the transition n is equal to 4 to n is equal to 2 of the helium plus spectrum? So here we need to find out which of these would have the same wavelength. So let's say, how do we find wavelength when it comes to hydrogen or helium spectra? We use the formula for wave number. The formula here, the general formula would be one by a lambda equals z square times r, which is the constant and then inside the brackets, you'll have 1 by n1 squared minus 1 by n2 squared. So, how are we going to apply this? Now, let's take it into two scenarios. The first one is for the helium plus ion. Now, for the helium plus ion, we know that the transition is from n equals 4 to n equals 2. And we also know that the atomic number is equal to 2. So therefore, 1 by lambda will be equal to 2, the number 2 here, not z, squared times r. And then inside the bracket, you have 1 by 2 square minus 1 by 4 square. Now that will be equal to 4r outside the bracket. And inside the bracket, you have 1 by 4 minus 1 by 16. Now remember 4 and 16 both have um, the number 4 as a common multiple. So therefore we take that common multiple outside the bracket. So 4r divided by 4 and inside the bracket you get 1 minus 1 by 4. The, four outs the 4s outside the bracket cancel each other and then what you're finally left with is 1 minus 1 by 4 which is equal to 3 by 4 times r. 
So if we were to find out the wavelength of the helium plus ion in that particular case, it will be 4 divided by 3r. Now how do we um, calculate it for hydrogen? Now for hydrogen, we do not know the exact transition. What we do know is that hydrogen has an atomic number of 1. And we also know that that value will be equal to 3r divided by 4. So what we're going to do is we're going to put 3r by 4 on the left hand side because it has the same value as 1 by a lambda and then on the and then on the right hand side we would use the calculation 1 squared times r gives 1 r which is the same as r and then you have 1 by and 1 squared minus 1 by and 2 squared so we can cancel out the r's and um, what, what we're getting is 3 by 4 equals 1 by n1 square minus 1 by n2 squared. Now, we can either deduce the value of this particular relation by going backwards on our calculation and getting the answer option D, or we can check each option. Now, let's start with A. So for A, 1 by n1 squared minus 1 by n2 squared would be equal to 1 over 2 squared, which is 4, minus 1 over 3 squared, which is 9. So that gives you 9 minus 4 by 36, which is 5 by 36. So again, that's incorrect. So what about option 2? I mean, option B. n equals 4 to n equals 2. Now in this case, it will be 1 by 2 squared minus 1 by 4 squared, which is equal to 1 by 4 minus 1 by 16, which is equal to 3 over 16, which is incorrect. Now, what about option C? Option C says n equals 3 to n equals 1. So that will be 1 by 1 squared over 1 by 3 squared, which is basically 1 minus 1 by 9, which gives you 8 over 9. And finally, we have option D, which we know to be the correct one. And in order to prove that, all you have to do is substitute the values. 1 by 1 minus 1 by 4, which is equal to 1 minus 1 by 4. That gives you 3 over 4. So if you put 1 and 2 over here, you'll get the same answer as the helium ion. So therefore, the correct option among the following is option D n equals 2 to n equals 1. So the transition n equals 2 to n equals 1 in the hydrogen atomic spectrum will have the same wavelength as the transition n equals 4 to n equals 2 of the helium spectrum. Now note that in our calculations we did not use the Rydberg's constant, the reason being that it is just a constant. It is not affecting the variables when it comes to a comparison. Now in a comparison you don't need to put in the constants all the time, Without the constants, there are cases where you can get the right answer. In this case, option D was found to be the right answer without doing so. That concludes this episode of Fast Track for QSAT CAT. We hope you found it interesting. If you are willing to access more of our useful and interesting content regarding QSAT or other um, examinations, then please don't forget to subscribe to our channel Agile Rank Mate. So, uh, if you want to get the latest updates, so all, all we can do is press the notifications icon and set it to all, and that's present below the video. If you like what you saw, then you can always comment on it in the comment section again present down below. So until the next episode, take care, stay safe, stay alert, bye-bye for now.